guys and welcome back to my channel so you guys i watched the unsolved mysteries and i watched the one with the guy from wilmington delaware and that's where i live so i wanted to talk about it on my channel of course i have 90s vibes going on today i got my grateful dead shirt on and buxom came out with some new lipsticks that are like 90s inspired so that's why i got like the fake freckles on my nose i know it's kind of weird but i actually really do have freckles um i just wanted to them to show up on camera so if you're wondering what these little specks are on my face that's what it is i know it's a weird trend i'm into it i'm weird though so it's fine but if you guys like these type of videos make sure to hit the subscribe button like and let's get to it so jack wheeler was prominent washington public servant and what's crazy is still to this day his death is unsolved and there's a lot of speculation surrounding his death he was actually discovered in a landfill which is not far from my house right off 495 and it's funny because when you drive down the highway like it's such a big landfill like you just get an overwhelming smell of disgust and trash it's like bleh, barf he was actually a graduate of yale harvard and west point which are huge prominent schools or like for geniuses obviously i'll never go there he was a military consultant and served as a special assistant to the Secretary of the Air Force under the Presidents Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, and his entire life he's basically been dedicated to public service. But he did battle depression and he was also bipolar as well. He had two homes, one in New York and one down here in Delaware in Newcastle. And this part of Newcastle, old Newcastle, it's the cutest little town. The town is really quiet. It's old, historic. It's very cute. I actually went and walked around Battery Park, which is right where he lives not long ago, with my daughters riding their bike. It's like right on the water front it's very quiet people are super happy it's just a really cutesy town it's like trendy and cool it honestly reminds me of one of the little towns from like a lifetime movie where it's like picture perfect i know it sounds stupid but that's literally what it reminds me of after he spent christmas of 2010 in new york with his family he went to return home to newcastle his second home in delaware by himself and he actually stopped in washington for a brief amount of time for work because that's also where he would work what's interesting too is someone attempted to set the house across the street from him on fire the night before he was actually in a legal battle about the construction of the home across the street from him because apparently he did not want it being built because this town where he lived it's very historic and it's actually part of battery park which is a historic park and you're not supposed to build houses there apparently he was very adamant on it not happening he did not want it to happen he was really really upset and you know like with bipolar your emotions are very very strong so they can you know really go up and down they never found out who actually set the fire but his cell phone was actually found in that house the construction site house following day on december 29th that's when he emailed that his home had previously been broken into and his cell phone his badge and his briefcase had all been stolen and you look at the evidence photos everything's just thrown everywhere his one sword from west point was thrown on the ground spices had been thrown everywhere and everything and everything was just trashed it almost to me when you look at the photos looks like somebody was looking for something and like determined to find it type now something that's really interesting that the unsolved mysteries didn't talk about is that he emailed his therapist that morning that he went missing that he had gotten to a fight with his wife and was feeling dazed and boxed into a corner then later that day at 6 p.m he was seen at his local pharmacy in delaware where he would typically pick up his medication and he seems totally out of it he seems paranoid he seems like someone's looking for him he looks really disheveled he's got one shoe on he looks like he's like swaying back and forth he's looking really worried really nervous actually asked a bunch of people for a ride back to his house in wilmington because he couldn't find his car where he had parked apparently he would forget all the time where he would park and i know it sounds really weird but i'm 
exactly the same way. I one time when I was pregnant walked around a parking garage for literally like 40 minutes looking for my car with a gun beep 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 could not find it so like I'm not judging him. I know people are probably like that's like crazy but I don't think so. You know it happens to the best of us. Then about 40 minutes later, he was seen on another Wilmington camera, disheveled, holding his shoes, walking around another parking garage. Apparently was repeatedly telling the attendant that his briefcase had been stolen over and over again. He seemed really, really worried that his briefcase was gone. When you watch the documentary, it, a lot of his coworkers said he never went anywhere without his briefcase. It makes me wonder if something was in that briefcase that people weren't supposed to know about or he wasn't supposed to know about or there was something in there that somebody was specifically trying to find and that's why his house was like a mess and ransacked. Then he appears again on another camera and this one is the Nemours camera, Wilmington, on December 30th, which is the following day. And part of the day he's located on like underneath the streets, I guess there. I didn't know that this was a thing. Um, so I kind of want to like go to the scene and see. I had no idea this even existed, but apparently a huge basement of an office building, um, and there's like gyms and workout rooms and it's like its own little area under there, under there. I had no idea. And he's actually seen leaving with like a sweatshirt on and everyone who sees the footage said they've never seen that sweatshirt before. It's not something he would typically wear. And again, in that camera footage, he looks really nervous. He looks paranoid. He's like watching his back. It looks like he's looking over his shoulder almost like someone's coming to get him type. That following morning, December 31st, is when his neighbor noticed a window open and then he went and checked around and that's when he realized like his whole house had been ransacked and he called the police to report that his home had been burglarized. Just before this, the police had been notified by um, trash men that work in landfills that they had discovered a body that was badly beaten and when the police came they noticed he was beaten really really bad and interesting enough though he still had his west point ring on he had a rolex and you know rolexes aren't cheap so somebody who hurt him wasn't looking for a little bit of money they were looking for something i think information wise. After he went to the corners and all that, it was ruled a homicide by blunt force trauma. He also suffered a heart attack as well. And they didn't put that in the documentary, but I wanted to add that in here. But I'm, I'm assuming he probably had a heart attack because he was probably scared to death, literally. Police ended up figuring out that the dumpster that he was like tossed in or something, the trash led back to a dumpster in Newark and they made it a big deal like Newark was so far how did he get there and they say oh my god that's so weird it's a big huge it's such a different town like how did he get there which is obviously how do you think he got there I think he got picked up and brought there duh but they make it seem like Newark's so far away but it's really not it's like a 15 minute drive so yeah there's no way he could have possibly walked from Wilmington to New York especially with how cold it was you know him being all disheveled impossible apparently in 2017 his wife had told the new york post that she believes that he had set off like these smoke bombs in the house across the street that was under construction that he didn't want there and she says that well she claims that he was also having a bipolar episode at the time and apparently receipts have proven that he had bought a black ski mask and black clothes but i mean Unless he's on camera, you don't know if she bought it and is saying that he bought it. You never really know. People wonder if maybe it could have been something to do with the house across the street that was being built that he didn't want being built. It was maybe some secret plot by the government. I don't really want to say that word. I might bleep it out because who knows? YouTube hates me these days. Now, the wife also says that she believes it could have been like a hired hit because they've had a reward out forever and nothing's come out of that. So she says that, you know, obviously because they've already been paid and apparently the whole him being fan in the landfill was like purely miraculous the body was disposed of most likely 
he wouldn't have been found it was like kind of pure luck so she says that it's pretty obvious a pro must have done it so now i want to get into the fun part the theories the first theory is this and i'm gonna read it because i want it to make sense Sometimes I'm not the best at describing stuff. The Washington Post gives an explanation, and this is a quote. It says, the U.S. government assassinated him because he was going to blow the whistle on the dumping of chemical weapons stash. Again, I'm just going to read this article. It's just like a little bit because I really don't want anything to get confused or like misconstrued. But it says, at the time of his death, Wheeler happened to be working as a consultant for a Mitri Corporation, M-I-T-R-E. I don't know if I said that right go ahead I'm sure all the internet people are gonna be like you found it wrong you're so annoying guys I'm not perfect where he dealt with cybersecurity issues the paper also pointed to a theory that the Chinese had murdered him for secrets he held about America's cyber warfare capabilities Wheeler also reported his briefcase among among other work related items had been stolen just prior to his death in 2011 wheeler's widow catherine told slate she believed it was a hitman another theory is that it was just a mugging going wrong basically at the wrong place at the wrong time but let me tell you he had a rolex on um he still had cash and he had his ring let me tell you something they're poor or they're on drugs or something like that and they're really willing to go rob somebody they're not just gonna let a rolex go or let a lot of money go i'm telling you people where i live like her, are hurting for money so bad that they rob people's cars and just take change so there's no way if this was just like a robbery going wrong they would have left those items another theory is that he climbed into the dumpster himself to keep warm i don't believe it not for one second if he wanted to keep warm he would have stayed down at his like office thing that he was seen on camera like underneath the ground in that basement area why would he get into a dumpster another one was that it was part of the neighborhood feud because he didn't want that house being built makes me wonder if all of that was a setup to make it look like it was because it was part of a feud part of me wonders if that was a setup like to make it look like it was part of a feud you know to get the ball rolling like oh he's having a feud with his neighbors he got this thing going on but i want to make it look like that's the reason to divert what's really going on why what was really happening that's kind of my opinion but i want to hear what you guys think do you think it's a little bit far stretch or do you think that kind of makes sense others speculate too that possibly he was in a car accident and the driver got really nervous and tossed him in a dumpster and another theory and this one's like very interesting is he could have jumped out of a moving car and that's why he was wearing one shoe Hmm. And people speculate that he could have been taking a taxi because his wife says in the docu that he would arrive home in taxis all the time because he wouldn't be able to find his car. Or maybe he was jumping out of a car from the person that was like headed to get him. Like that's what I would assume. I don't know. Because if you're getting a hit, I'm sure like maybe the person with the hit isn't working alone. Usually it would take like two people because if you're a hitman, you can't lift him like the size of him by yourself once you get him done and you gotta like discard of him. So like maybe they like swooped him up and he ended up getting away the first time, did it and get away the second time. Ooh, maybe I should be a detective. I don't know. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this case. Let me know your guys' theories. This one was so interesting to, for me to watch because like I said, I live here and I kind of want to like go take a little sneak peek around the areas he was, but I have kids all the time. So maybe when my one child goes back to school, we'll see. But I hope you guys like this video. If you do, don't forget to like it and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll see you soon. Bye.